It's about that time, folks. Ultimate is days away. Why are we so charged for Ultimate? There are a lot of small reasons that accumulate to explain why, but certainly none could be bigger than the simple fact that it represents a new beginning for us. With freshly dealt hands in Ultimate, unforeseeable frontiers lie before us, and we're all insatiably curious. Will Ultimate be our time? Will we finally show the world what we're made of? In other words, do we have what it takes to compete at the highest levels? Top-level play isn't magic. Whatever makes top-level play top-level play can be explained by highly organized ways of thinking and underlying principles that govern that organization. In several of my past videos, I've tried to look critically at attributes that most people, at face value, consider to be instrumental in being a top player. Reaction times, adaptability, and so on. My goal with those videos was to show that, with rare and fairly pronounced exceptions, qualities that are pretty much hardwired like simple reaction times don't really have much stake in determining player quality. So what do I mean by underlying principles that describe these highly organized ways of thinking, and how do they affect our perception of who does and who doesn't have the sauce to make it to the top? Let's first start by addressing the word principle itself. A principle is, in essence, a root from which all things grow and to which all things point back. This suggests that the qualities we observe in top players aren't the result of randomly assorted, unrelated skill sets. That is, what appears to be, say, godlike reaction time is really just a sophisticated form of prediction that is explained by effective and efficient ways of thinking rather than being a disjoint, isolated skill that some people somehow just have and others don't. If you don't believe me, check out my Smash Conceptions video where I talk about reaction times called, unpredictably, Can You Improve Reaction Time? The Reader's Digest version of that video is that how players manage their expectations and efficiently narrow down possibilities can dramatically affect their reaction time. This principle I speak of that explains impressive reaction times is just one of many examples that I couldn't possibly list exhaustively, but the takeaway is that this notion can be extended to other facets of top-level play. Or put another way, if you're with me this far, we can conclude that what makes a top player is less about hard and fast skills in isolation and more about understanding concepts and ways of thinking that underlie and give rise to those skills. This might seem like an oversimplification, but be cautious to not underestimate how deep the rabbit hole goes in the search to understand something at its most rudimentary levels. When we start out in Smash, and anything really, we interface with the game at a very high level of abstraction. A high level of abstraction just means that a lot of information is compressed into a, an itty bitty little easy to understand package, but at the cost of details and precision. For example, your mouse lets you interface with your computer at a very high level of abstraction. You can navigate your computer with it, but you can't program your computer with just mouse clicks. In other words, you can perform very general tasks, but with very limited control. This isn't much different in concept from how we first operate going into Smash. Our notion of concepts beyond try to slam dunk the other dude is non-existent. As we progress more and more in Smash, however, we naturally start to pick up on the more obvious patterns and concepts, and so old, more general concepts split into new, more specific sub-concepts as we ride the spiral ever deeper and discover facets of the game we previously hadn't appreciated. As a result, we can interface with the game at a lower level of abstraction, and thus have more fine-tuned control. And just so I can feel fancy, let's go ahead and call this idea of parsing concepts into more specific sub-concepts conceptual bifurcation. The bugaboo, however, is that past a certain point, it's difficult to break concepts down further or figure out where one concept ends and another begins. And this is an important challenge to confront, because when you don't recognize or understand meaningfully separate facets of the game, it will manifest as fundamental errors, since in essence, an aspect of the game will be affecting you without you knowing it. Here's something concrete to get an idea of what I'm talking about. ...to flow right here, reacting to that normal get up, getting in there, and he did get grabbed, but due to his fall speed, Semi messed up his combo. That's actually quite a reversal of fates, right? Mario backaired behind Roy's shield, and Roy nared behind Mario's shield twice. For those who are especially new, this is called a cross-up, and it's a deliberate attempt to get behind a person to limit their options. Some will recognize this deliberate action as a meaningfully separate event from everything else that happened prior to it. 
To others, the entire sequence will bleed together into one big blur, and those people will likely respond in inconsistent and disadvantageous ways since they can't formulate a response to something they don't really know is a thing in the first place. That is, they'll apply understanding of a more general concept and a more general level of understanding to a more specific one without realizing and will be worse off for it. Now, the hard part in all this is, and presumably why so few people achieve top-level status, is figuring out where to draw new lines to recognize meaningful new subconcepts, or even knowing that's what must be done in the first place as opposed to trying to develop other skills in less fruitful ways, like mindlessly grinding. To understand what I mean by drawing new lines, consider this string of letters. It just seems like a bunch of gibberish, right? But once you compartmentalize it, i.e. draw lines around certain groupings, you can extract meaning from them and recognize them as individual things rather than one great big unsightly wad. Now, let's recap the previous example. ...to flow right here, reacting to that normal guy that's getting in there, and he did get grabbed, but due to his fall speed, Semi messed up his combo. That's actually quite a reversal of fates, right? Here are two possible ways you could conceptualize what happened in this clip. You could lump everything that happened together in the neutral category, or draw a new line around when people deliberately land behind your shield and label that new concept as a distinct subcategory of neutral called cross-ups. This is what I mean by parsing down concepts, and this kind of thinking can be applied to any situation and given any name. What matters is that you distinguish between significant concepts in a way that makes sense to you, and they don't have to be well-established things with well-established names. In this next clip, a lot of things are happening in the span of about 10 seconds, but let's draw a line around Mario's fireball to neutral air sequence and call it the Italian flambe. Oh, doesn't get punished for it. He should have gotten punished for it, but he didn't. Um, At that, we've parsed a new concept, and gained a more precise understanding, and given ourselves a new opportunity to gain an advantage for it, or at least keep ourselves from losing an advantage. When you plateau in Smash, or to frame things consistently with the video, what keeps people from achieving top-level status, I argue, is not making conceptual progress, and not successfully breaking pre-existing concepts down further to open up new areas of the game. Like in the Wario example, if you don't recognize the cross-up and the rest of the neutral exchange as separate events, that's a conceptual aspect of the game others will participate in that you won't to your eventual detriment. Or maybe they won't participate in it and what gives you the edge is that you see what they don't. And of course, this is what it means to see things that others don't. The natural question now is how to identify these not-so-obvious concepts, but that's really the difficulty in all this. In the spirit of things not being engraved in stone, there's no set number of concepts to understand and no easy guideline to know where to draw lines between new, fine-grained ideas. The journey to top-level play is about identifying usable concepts in a way that makes sense to you. If you use a good character, that character may bypass the need to understand certain concepts at a very low level of abstraction, what many call having a free something or other, free neutral, free disadvantage, whatever. If you use a bad character, your need to mince ideas and concepts may be greater. Add to this the fact that different people have wildly different frames of reference to understand new concepts, some of which are more well suited to Smash and thus are quicker to pick it up, and we see that, indeed, the rabbit hole is almost limitlessly deep, and that the task of parsing old concepts into meaningfully separate subconcepts is a formidable one. I believe each person has a unique path to the same place in terms of achievement in Smash and many other things. Some just involve a little bit more stumbling. Achievement, in my view, is a question of the right concepts and the proper degrees of understanding rather than a question of fixed talents that confer unattainable skills. Suffice it to say, in my view, good thinking gives rise to good skills, not the other way around. I believe that if we stripped down every example of top-level play to its skeleton, we'd find that they're all just different expressions of the same underlying principles and concepts rather than a menagerie of unrelated, tacked-on talents. So what's the big picture here? The big picture is that concepts are flexible and that one only need pull back the curtain to find that the level of play to which we all aspire is a matter of discovering and parsing concepts and ideas with fine-tuned precision. Many people see skill in Smash, 
this way. A festive little tree onto which you pin or hang disjoint skills that you just happen to be born with and hope that that'll take you as far as it can. Rather than this. A set of roots and ideas that when understood and compartmentalized grow into the skills we see at top levels of play. So, based on the theories and ideas presented in this video, I'll answer the question posed in the title of the video. Who is capable of top-level play? The answer? Almost everybody. Does this mean almost everybody will become top players? That's very highly unlikely. Being in anything for the long haul is an act of faith. I learned this when I took up music over a decade ago from the ground up. I thought I didn't have what it took to become a composer. I really did think people were just born with or without the right stuff. But I loved, and still do love, music more than life itself, and I couldn't accept that my fate was decided by talent or lack thereof, even if that was what I feared most. I beat my head against the wall until the wall broke. My passion is music. Yours may be smash. I present these ideas to encourage those who are in the position I was ten years ago whose worst fear is that they don't have the right sauce, and to say that I know in painful detail what it's like to squirm every day wondering if I have what it takes. At that suitably dramatic finish, I'll end this Smash Conceptions as my send-off to Smash 4, and I will look forward to a future in Ultimate as we all try to better ourselves and realize the top players in ourselves I theorize and genuinely believe are there. Thank you guys, as always, for taking the time out of your day to hear what I have to say, and in spite of this video being a little conceptually dense, I hope I managed to make some sense. As always, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel with the notifications bell if you did like this video, since I put out videos fairly regularly, and am tremendously encouraged to continue knowing that I'm reaching new ears.